Ah! No, no, You're calm down. Yet. He stopped when, when, when you stopped and didn't start till after you started. Everybody online, start number three. I have some problems here with these people. Well, it's okay. our first time. I know, I know. <laughs> I, start, I didn't start until after you started the first chord. Okay. okay. So, yeah. Here. I wasn't sure to reset it or not. Okay. There you go. <laughs> oh, man. Okay, we'll get this one right. I'm still recording. I can trim mine. Yeah, well, they're getting a show if they're watching live, so <laughs> nobody's watching live. Not yet. Jen's watching live. Well, she hasn't started yet. I get little numbers here that say when people are watching. <laughs> All right, I'm recording. You ready? Take 25. <laughs> Okay. for inviting us out here today to perform. My name is David Jones. A little bit about that song, it was called The Seven Last Words, as I've been reminded by so many people, hey, this is only six words. We've never done it that way before. Well, we've never done it that way, but of course, the mantra of the church is we've never done it that way before, so it's kind of implied, so get off my back about that. Seven last words. Um, that song was written in a very stormy period of time in my life where this church was going through a great deal of transformation from a uh, suburban, middle-class, blue-collar church to one that's more of a uh, urban congregation reaching out to kids and uh, doing outreach with at-risk children in our community. And you just get so frustrated sometimes with the resistance that you have. And so it's kind of in the soup that all the songs that you're going to hear today were written, including this next song. In fact, the next song is called Save the Children. 
and uh, it was written on a really, really good summer day uh, back in 1998. When I, here I was, I'd written a really great song, what I thought was a really great song, and I decided I was going to reward myself by going on a six-mile run, and I'm a mile into the run, and then all of a sudden, this melody for the chorus starts hitting me, going through my head over and over and over again. I'm like, oh, dag nabbit, what am I going to do? I didn't want to get out of my run and my cadence, and I just decided, well, I'm going to sing this song all the way through that six-mile run. And so certainly, that's exactly what I did. So this song kept going for five miles. I'm singing it over and over and over. So by the time I got back uh, to my, my parents-in-law's home, I pretty much had it formulated the direction I wanted to go. And this is about the kids that we work with in our community. But then a couple years later, Terry, our roadie at that time, was working on writing some slams and poetry, which are a type of poetry. And he said, you know what, I got something I think that fits with that. And we, we should match this up together with that. And I, I didn't quite have a vision for it. But um, I worked with it with, with that, and all of a sudden, when, once I heard Terry do this, I said, oh my gosh, it's like these two things were written for each other. And so I'm really grateful for Terry's persistence with that. Since that time, this thing, these two things go together. I think nobody's ever heard this with, uh, separate from the slam, and so I'm really grateful. So Terry's going to come up here, and uh, he's going to do a slam as a part of her song today. This is called Save the Children. Ten years old and he sits alone, a dirty little kid in a dirty little corner, trying, trying, trying to be invisible and succeeding because mama, mama doesn't see him, mama doesn't care, she sold her soul for a ten dollar fix. And daddy, there's no daddy here, only mama's boyfriend this week, but mama's boyfriend taught him about God. Mama's boyfriend taught him, God's going to get you. Mama's boyfriend taught him, God doesn't like bad little boys like you. So get me another beer before I slap you again. Yeah, he's learned all about God. He's even heard the preacher man, the preacher man on TV telling him Jesus loves him. But he doesn't know this Jesus. He's never seen this Jesus. He can't find this Jesus. Maybe this Jesus doesn't come down here. He thinks as he sits alone, 10 years old and waiting to die. Who, who's gonna be his Jesus? Who's gonna risk their life to change his world? Who's gonna save the children? We struggle with indifference. Happy as we can be Building a little fence Keep away the pain We move into the suburbs Never see a neighbor Build beautiful big houses well, Some live on the street Save the children Using up resources 
other kids might hear. Save the children. Save the children. Let them bring it to your knees. Save the children. Save the children. Let them bring it to Our uh, next song, this song I told you that on a very, very good day back in 1998, I wrote a couple of really good songs. In fact, this was a song I wrote right before that song, the one that I gave myself that reward of that six mile run. I, uh, it was one of those crazy things I got up and I was out in the backyard of my uh, wife's parents' home in Michigan, and this song struck me, and I mean like a thunderclap. It took me 10 to 15 minutes at most to write this song because it just, I heard the melody, oh, I gotta write this, and all of a sudden I heard the words, I gotta write these down. It was a story, it started with a story about a man looking up at a woman, and it's just like, okay, well, this is a love song? No, it's not a love song. And I didn't know where it was gonna go. I really did not know where this song was gonna take me, and it kind of surprised me. But it's related to, I know what was in the back of my mind was a story that had just happened probably about six months prior. There was a young man by the name of Wayne, 36 years of age, who had never gone to church in his entire lifetime. Probably for the last six months he had been, or seven months prior to that, he'd been coming to church with his wife who wanted to bring their son to church. And, you know, he decided at the end of this that he wanted to be a Christian. And so I baptized Wayne here at this congregation. And then one week and a day, one week and a day after he's baptized, he got diagnosed with terminal brain cancer. And I said, what was going through my mind at that point is, boy, if I weren't a Christian, I'd be looking up at God at that point. I'd say, okay, God, I just gave my life to you, and this is the way you treat me? Thank you very much. That's really crappy. But you know, when I went to visit with Wayne, he had something totally different to say to me. He said, you know what? Thank God that God found me in time. And I was just blown away by that. And I think that's probably what was sticking back into my mind here when this song was written. His face will let a penny call 
I just want to thank again uh, those who are here today to help and uh, make this possible for Indie Artist Presents. And most importantly to the person on my left, uh, Jay Carover, who's uh, kind of filling in, just doing a fantastic job and, and helping me out here on the Cajones. And so, Jay, thank you for being present. And I'm grateful for this opportunity. I do want to leave you with one last song. And as I said, this was kind of written in that same mix, that same, same year or two in which we were struggling as a congregation and really struggling with our direction. I was struggling as a pastor. And, and you know, this, this song was a song that took me a long time to write. The song prior to that, Take the Call, as I said, took me about 15 minutes. This song probably took me five or six years. Five or six years. In fact, it started with just what we call a sea walk down. And I said, oh, that's kind of cool. What can I do with that? And, and then, of course, you start singing all the songs that you can sing with a sea walk down. And then I started getting kind of a, a direction for it. And, and I just kind of stalled. It sat there for several years because I couldn't figure out. It was a tough story. It's about my childhood and about some of the destruction that's caused by uh, people were abusive. I, I was beat. I was thrown through a plate glass window. I was knocked unconscious by my, by my stepfather. A lot of these things um, are certainly leave an impression. Worst are sometimes the words. The words to stick with you a lot longer than the heartache and then the physical pains. And I just said, well, where do you go with that story? What, what is a redeeming thing from that? And, and that's why I just kind of sat there for a while until I was ready to think to receive the message of God. And you hear what that is, and, and I hope this means something to you. This was one of those songs that when I toured with, with the Rejoice Band and with Splintered, um, people who saw us, and it's not like we had a huge fan base, but we had a big enough fan base that we would see some of the same people over and over again. This song was the one song that they always wanted to hear. And so it became our practice to have this song as the last song of her concert. And so I hope again that you go in peace today. Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. Little ones to him belong, oh, they are weak, but he is strong. So long ago, I depended on my parents and the love for to show me the way to see me through. The words they cut and fists that flew ripped the child of God asunder in my heart. So the joy of the Lord from my soul. came to me at the end of our worship service when I heard those words, go in peace, serve the Lord. And so that's my prayer for you today. Go in peace, serve the Lord, never let the fear of life grab hold of you. Never fear
praiseth the Lord for I am near. You will fail well, we all fall short, and the cares of life will threaten to choke you. Keep your eyes on the Lord. loves me he loves me oh yes Jesus loves me for the Bible tells me my dear Lord tells me I've got a word for you today Jesus loves you so so 